After the boy took control of the protagonist's car without his permission, the insect still managed to crash Sankian's car, and his mother's viper ordered him to switch with the protagonist. As the insect had nothing to do, he asked his mother's viper what he should do now, and if she would pay him. But the snake only said that they would talk about it at his uncle's house. When they finally arrived at the site, the protagonist told them that he was going to pick up Yinxia from work, so it was up to them to go up on their own. His uncle, who isn't really an uncle at all, but just the uncle of the protagonist's wife, asked if this was the way to receive guests. But if it were me, I'm sure the three of them would have had a very humiliating time. The jellyfish pretended that everything was fine and told the protagonist to hurry up, until the husband asked what she was doing, and even referred to the protagonist as disposable garbage, asking why she didn't let him take them upstairs. But the rattlesnake was planning to do something in order to harm the protagonist, and I've never seen a man who in my life with so many toxic beings in society. When they went upstairs, the poison anaconda told her husband not to say anything and to leave everything to her, and we soon saw one of the most poisonous caterpillars in the book, which was precisely the first lady's mother. As soon as they entered the rattlesnake's lair, the jellyfish told the first lady's mother that she had already told her not to let the protagonist drive that car, since it was the protagonist himself who bought all three of the cars they owned. The rest of the mummy still blamed the car crash on Sankian, saying that it was a waste of money to let it happen. And unfortunately the tick centipede still believed what his sister-in-law had said. Her son contributed even more, saying that Sankian should only drive an old electric motorcycle. And the scum's father even said that Sankian was useless, and asked how she had the courage to let him drive an Audi. I can't wait to see these insect manures pay dearly for everything they're doing now. And the Jararaka even said that when he came back, she would confront him, and he would pay the bill if he wanted to drive her car again. Dude, this insignificant being just stole the protagonist's car, saying it was hers, and she still thinks she really owns it. That's all the insects would really like to see happen. And after a while, we see the protagonist with his car parked, until some people show up, offending him because he's the Sioux family's son-in-law. These insects also said that he was a disgrace to men, and they complained that he had married Yinxia, who was practically the most beautiful girl in town. Tired of all this, he simply asked those corpse beetles to tell him what they wanted, because his patience was wearing thin. Apparently the guys didn't like what he'd said very much, and the blonde ordered his brothers to finish him off, but unfortunately for the three of them, they took a beating, and Sankian said that the next time they tried something, the consequences wouldn't be so simple. As soon as they left the scene, the first lady showed up asking why the front of the car was smashed, and the protagonist told her the truth, that her cousin's insect had hit the car while driving. The first lady thought her mother would do something when she found out, but little did she know that the snake had already been tricked by her brother and sister-in-law. Returning home, we saw just the insects from before, and the first lady asked why they were all there, and her father said that given the size of the crash, it couldn't even be called a new car. The snake then simply took the keys from the protagonist's hand again, and even said that since he didn't know how to handle the car, she wouldn't allow him to drive it anymore, even if he touched the car, there was no point in driving it. The insect next to her even asked if he thought that just because Yinxia could make money now, how was he going to solve this? Not to mention that repairs to an Audi were quite expensive. The first lady didn't understand anything that was going on there, and the viper said that he had warned her not to let Sankian drive a good car, and since she didn't listen, now she would know the consequences. The first lady was even going to say something about the car being Sankian's, but she soon realized that this was all just a bunch of crap. Zombies Project even said that if Yinxia tried to speak for the protagonist again, she would make the first lady divorce him now, and the insects tried to ensnare the first lady by bad-mouthing her husband. She was even going to say something to these insects, but the young protagonist simply pulled her close to him, and her mother said that now Yinxia was the support of their family, and Sankian no longer needed to pick her up from work from now on. The viper told the first lady to invite her uncle to dinner that night, so she wouldn't have to go with a nobody, referring directly to the protagonist. What I find incredible is how this girl is completely lacking in attitude to actually defend her husband against her parents so I withdraw her title of first lady. That's because a person who puts the protagonist, who by the way was her husband, below her own parents, she doesn't even deserve to be put first in his life either, it's just a shame that he's such a cattle prod, unfortunately.
Sankian said that she had some things to do that evening, so she should really go, and the Supreme Dung commented that the boy was being clever, knowing that he shouldn't show up at the party, so he didn't need to embarrass himself by making excuses. Sankian again asked Yingxia to go to the party and have fun, and on the way to their house, the insect said that her mother was really amazing, since Sankian didn't even contradict a word they said. This piece of sewage even said that Sankian didn't even deserve any position in the Su family, so he had no authority to say anything, and her son should be careful not to crash the car again, as he would have no excuse this time to help him. According to the rest of the feces, everything was under control now, and she said that since the Lang family had bought two cars, that meant they must have made a lot of money, and he had to find a way to borrow some. But by borrowed, she meant taking money and not giving it back, and he said that his sister was now well off, so so it was only natural that she should help him, since he was her older brother, and he was going to ask for a total of 200,000 at dinner that day. The rattlesnake said that if she wanted to lend him a note, he could give it to her and get the money first, and he said that now his sister was very rich, and it would be pointless for her to ask for it back, and after all, he was her older brother. During the dinner itself, which was more like lunch as it was still daylight, Dung said that he had recently been going through some problems and would like to borrow some money. Yingxia's mother then asked how much he would like, and raising only two fingers, she thought he would like 2,000, until he said he would like 200,000, leaving her and the rest of the pig surprised. He just asked her to sit down and let him finish talking, and even commented that her family's two cars cost more than a million, which wasn't very much at all, and the snake once again helped to ensnare the rest of the feces. The red viper said that Yingix's mother was now a very rich madam, and it all cost a few million, asking if she was hesitant to give them a mere 200,000. The cobra also said that their parents' relatives said that she was married to a fake rich man, so her brother and she spoke for her, and she could give 200,000 this time, after which none of those relatives would be able to say that she had nothing. After a while in silence, the poison viper asked if it was only 200,000, and she would give them the amount, given that this insignificant being didn't even have a hard place to fall, and even said that she would give such a sum. Both Yingxia's father and Yingxia herself are surprised that the rattlesnake would agree to this donation, and suddenly we see the supreme insect getting its ass kicked live. When the manure was completely on the ground, the big man realized that there he was quite excited by the look of it, and the snake asked what was going on, and as he had said he was going to the bathroom, she wanted to know why he was being beaten. The walking mummy asked who those guys were, and how they dared to touch her son. But the big man commented that her idiot son simply wanted to bother his wife, so it was only natural that the dung should get a beating. When she asked if this was true, the dung said no, and apparently this unnecessary rattlesnake in the story believed his son's version, and commented on the clothes his wife was wearing, saying that she was the one who wanted to seduce her son. This made the big man completely angry and stressed, and he said that even if his wife wasn't wearing that dress, her son had no right to harass his wife, and he even punched the snake in the face twice before. Although that's still not enough for what this rattlesnake really deserved. Unfortunately I'll have to settle for this, and then the insect's father just kept quiet. When the manure was about to continue being beaten relentlessly, the big man said that he really was a good person, and the person who had upset his wife would pay hundreds of thousands. And if by any chance he wasn't able to pay it, he would certainly pay with his own life. And the dung said he didn't have any money, but he did have a car. He could take the car and let the insect go, but Yingixa was upset this time, and decided to speak out, saying that the car was hers, and he didn't even have the right to give it to the fat man, and he should sort it out for himself, and not involve her. The whale out of the water became interested in Yingxia, and told her that he had a lot of money, and as it was only a broken Audi, he wouldn't really take her car. However, she was certainly against it, and he said she wasn't qualified to say anything, and none of the women he wanted could actually run away. Then the snake said that she was from the Sioux family, and the Sioux family would never let him have Yingxia, and from the look on the fat man's face, the Sioux family didn't have a good reputation with him. The snake was the one who got hit this time, and he says that just saying something about the Sioux family couldn't even help them in this situation. Besides, the Sioux family had no power now, and no one was really afraid of them. Trembling completely this time, the protagonist's wife said she was warning him not to cause any more trouble, or he might regret it bitterly. The fat man got even more excited, and said that he liked strong girls like her, but she shouldn't worry, as he still had some guests, and would come back for her when he'd finished his business. He left two guards there so that no one could escape, so they stood guard, and this time, the snake asked what they would do now, and told them to call her grandmother and ask the elders to come there, and maybe they would sort it out. 
However, the jellyfish's husband said that his mother would never intervene in anything, and that fat guy was definitely not so easy to deal with. Outraged, his wife asked what he was talking about, and if he really wanted their daughter to go with that pig until Yingxia herself asked if she didn't know what kind of person her grandmother was. She was only strong in the Su family, and she could never offend those people for Yingxia, and she said that he was the only one who could really save her, and when her parents asked who it was, she said that it was Sankian. The funny thing is that when the chips were down, she wanted to call the protagonist to help her, but when it came to defending him from her toxic parents and relatives, she was the first to hesitate and keep quiet. If it were up to me, I'm sure this girl would have been alone a long time ago, regardless of whether she was beautiful or not, because the law of gravity applies to everyone, and everything that is firm one day ends up on the ground and becomes old and wrinkled, if you know what I mean. The viper asked if her daughter was going crazy, or if she wanted a coin to tear up, and if she was really hoping that Sankian would be able to help her. The insect also said that Yingxia was insulting him, and she herself asked him to help her solve the problem. And if he didn't want to help, she should just tell him, and she didn't need to humiliate him. She immediately ordered the manure to shut up, and told him to stop being an idiot, because if it wasn't for him involving her in this, she wouldn't have to worry about him. After that, she called the cattle, and the cattle answered immediately, and when she asked where he was, we saw him at home having his meal. Yingxia told the cattle that she was in trouble, and asked if he could come and help her, and the little dog, without thinking twice, told his owner that he would be there in a few moments, making her very happy. Her mother told her to call her grandmother again, and asked her how she had been able to bet everything on the Sankian. But the young woman believed in her husband, not least because the ownerless puppy would definitely follow her orders. Yes, I'm disgusted with this girl, not least because the guy does everything for her, and she's not even capable of recognizing and defending him from his toxic relatives. In the room next to the one they were in, the fat man was telling Yang that he was a fan of his, and hoped to get on well with him, and even Chen Gang was nothing compared to him, and that Cloud City was now his. Yang said that if he had the chance, he should treat the fat man like a brother, and he thought that last time it was because of Chang Bin, and Bro Han was very disappointed with Yang's performance. Besides, if Mo Yang wants to return to the underworld, how could he be ready to compete with him for the City of Clouds? And suddenly, someone burst down the door of that place, and it was precisely the protagonist cattle. And yes, I'm disgusted with him too. When Yang saw him there, he asked why the boy was there, and the fat man asked if Yang really called that guy his brother, and he told the fat man to shut up, as he was in no position to say anything. Sankian asked if that guy was a friend of Yang's, and he said he was just a drinking buddy, and the protagonist asked how he dared to touch his wife. After that, Yang smashed the bottle of booze over the fat man's head, and in his thoughts, he said that that whale out of the water made Sankian even more disappointed in him. Without understanding anything, the giant insect asked why Yang had done it, and Yang asked if he had eaten feces, then asked what he had in mind to touch Sankian's wife. Leaving, Sankian asked if Yang could take care of it, and he said yes, and returning to the next room. The snake said that Sankian couldn't be trusted, and there wasn't even a cab outside. So he must have been hiding at home and didn't have the courage to come out, and asked how his daughter could trust him, and the snake said that only she believed in the protagonist, but offended him, as always. She also told her sister-in-law about her incompetence in finding a way out of the situation, and that her son was seriously injured, so he needed to go to hospital. Ingixia just listened to them quietly for a while, until just as she was about to finally open her mouth, the door opened, and they went into shock thinking it might be the fat man from before. But it was just Sankian, making Yingxia happy, and he immediately told them to leave. And the tick, who doesn't value his own life, asked which house Sankian was returning to, as if it was really any of his business. He also said that the fat man was outside with several guards, and once inside, he would never be able to get out. But let's just say that the protagonist played along. Ignoring the insect completely, they were soon outside, and the manure realized that the guys weren't there to end his life. Until suddenly, he noticed something different, they were kneeling on the ground, even all those who were helping the fat man himself, until at one point, Yingxia asked the cattle what had happened, and why they were kneeling there. According to the protagonist, looking at the fat man, he said that they might have fallen there accidentally, wanting the fat man to confirm his story, and when the insect was wondering if he would agree, he was intimidated only by the protagonist aura. As he was now too terrified to refuse anything, he simply said yes and the ground there was very slippery, so they fell. The big man wasn't lying, though, because they got into a fight and Sankian once again called his wife to leave, and it was clear that she would never believe such an act. 
leaving. She wondered what Sankian had done, and surely he must have told someone to finish them off. But that didn't matter much, since he did it exactly because of her. At Yingxia's house again, we see Yingxia's snake of a mother complaining to her husband for daring to scold her, and he asks her who told her to promise to give 200,000 to her own brother. She went on to say that Yingxia could make more money in the company, and 200,000 wasn't much. But he clearly said that this was embezzlement of public funds, and from the look on her face, even she didn't care about Yingxia's safety. Incredibly, this unusable mummy threw herself on the floor like an annoying child, saying that she didn't want to live anymore, and wondered why she had married such a useless person about giving up living. I can't wait for her to actually do it, and I think she forgot that her husband wasn't the only useless one in the story, since she's nothing but a bloodsucker. She even had the courage to ask her husband that if it weren't for him, she would be so ashamed of her family, and even her family trash talked them in secret. According to this viper with crocodile tears, she was also fighting for his reputation, and he was throwing a thousand knives and still accusing her, and if there's one thing this one doesn't know how to do, it's act well. She went on to say that they were going to collect the money the next day, and asked what they were going to do now, and she didn't want to live anymore, because being alive at the moment was useless, and her whole life had been for nothing. I think someone has forgotten that once you're nothing more than a parasite who only cares about taking money even from your own daughter, you usually can't expect a truly prosperous future. Yingxia told her mother to stop crying, making her finally shut her damn mouth, and she said she would get the money for her mother. On her way out, she ran into Sankian, and he asked her if her uncle wanted to borrow money again. So she decided to play dirty with him, immediately giving him a hug, and with tears in her eyes, asked if he could help her again. Since the guy is too much of a cattle prod and doesn't know how to put limits on his own wife, of course he was going to help, and he asked her if her uncle wanted the 200,000, and she said yes. But Sankian didn't have to worry, because she would pay the 200,000 back, and let's say he doubted it, and she said that if he didn't believe her, she would write a loan receipt. She promised for her honor and her pride that she would return the 200,000 to her husband. But he said that his money was her money, and it didn't make any difference whether it was 200,000 or 2 million, as long as it was for her. And kissing her on the forehead, as a form of supreme respect for her, he asked her how she had the courage to use the word loan to speak to him. However, she refused to accept it that easily, and she insisted on writing out a loan receipt. And suddenly, she asked if he had just recently said 2 million, asking how much money he had. And according to him, it was a little over 2 million only, and in a very different place this time. We see the protagonist complaining about having to give advance notice if he wanted to withdraw an amount over 100,000, and he wasn't supposed to need notice with that card. The unintelligent attendant asked if he really thought he still had any privileges with that car, and she told him that she had been working there for almost six months and had never seen that kind of bank card, wondering if he had gone to the wrong bank. Sankian then said that it wasn't really a privilege, but if her president saw him, he would certainly help count the ballots himself, and she said that her window wasn't a place for him to brag, so it wasn't for him to hold up other people's business. As she was doubting this, he asked if she could call her president now, so she could see that he really wasn't just bragging. Disgusted, she asked why her president was going to see just him, and she was warning him to get out of there while it was still possible, otherwise she would call security. Suddenly someone came up and asked what was going on and it was the director of that bank. And the clerk, with a lack of intelligence, said that the person wanted to withdraw 200,000, and she told him to give notice, but he was still there. The director was very kind to the protagonist, and told him that if he needed to give notice to withdraw more than 100,000 yuan, if he wanted to withdraw 200,000, he would have to wait until the next day. Showing her his card, he commented that perhaps she could change her thoughts after looking at it, and as soon as she saw it, she was impressed and initially speechless. Running out of there as soon as she spotted that card, she was soon in front of the protagonist, but very breathless from running, and she said that his business could definitely be settled at that very moment. He then asked when he could withdraw the money, and she said that she could withdraw it right now, and told him to go to the VIP room, and she could withdraw the money for him, and apologize for what had happened before, and hoped that the boy could forgive her. What's more, the director immediately ordered the attendant to apologize to the gentleman, and if she delayed things, she would no longer be able to keep her job. As soon as she apologized, people wondered who that young man was, and he really did look incredible. And it seemed that this young master wanted to withdraw the money discreetly, but he didn't expect to be treated like this by the officials. People even said it was time for that rattlesnake attendant to drop her snobbery, and she got nothing more than she really deserved, showing us that she really was worthless. After 
After a while, the principal said goodbye to the young protagonist, and in her thoughts, she said that he was very handsome and rich, and it was very likely that he was a young Yuncheng master. Come to think of it, she was beautiful, physically attractive and mature, and he didn't even have any interest in her, giving us the look of someone who really wasn't happy about it. After that, she immediately told her attendant to go home and wait for news, and the snobbish girl asked her principal what she had done wrong, and if he had asked her to reprimand her. The director then asked how she could serve someone like him, and she was suspended because she didn't have the basic knowledge of a bank, and asked what qualifications she had for that job. The girl didn't understand anything, so the principal decided to draw it for her to understand better, and the bank card in his hand was an exclusive customization of the bank, exclusive for those who deposited more than 10 billion. The girl certainly didn't know where to put her face now, and once back at home, the protagonist said that he had brought that money for Yingxia. But immediately the treacherous viper took the bag full of money, opened it just to check that it really wasn't any trolling, and said that they still had some things to do, so they had to leave first. She said that Sankian would accompany them, and her husband was thinking to himself, indignant at what she had done and lending him 200,000, not to mention the fact that they didn't even say thank you, and just took the money and left. He still wondered how she could think that they would actually return anything, and on the way, the insect told his mother not to get too tired, and that she should let him hold the money too. But if he slept while they were in the car, she wouldn't know what to do if he happened to lose the money, and the boy wanted to take a look, since he had never seen so much money in his life. As Sankian watched everything through the car's rearview mirror, Dung asked what he was looking at, and if by any chance he had never seen so much money in his life. The protagonist then pretended that he had never really seen so much money, and he commented to his aunt that he had heard there were a lot of bus thieves these days, and she could end up losing the money. The jellyfish asked how he could dare threaten her like that, and when they got to the bus stop, the protagonist decided to make a call, and the person on the phone said that the person he had asked to meet had already been found. With everything ready, he thought it was a real shame that he wouldn't be able to see this show in person. And on the bus itself, we saw the insects there, in the background, until at a specific stop, we saw these gentlemen getting on. The driver also commented that he was really greedy, because even outside the bus stop people were still getting on. And after that, when the bus finally started, the guy from before practically fell on the dung. The viper was outraged by what he did, even though the guy apologized for it, and he just said that he was holding on tight when the bus started moving fast, and again apologized for it. After that, someone else helped him up, and after saying goodbye and apologizing, the viper glared at the gentleman, and she didn't even let go of the bag for a second. However, when they reached their destination, she began to wonder where her money was, leaving everyone there with their feet in the grave afterwards. Returning to Sankian, the person on the phone had said that the money had arrived, and he would send it to the protagonist the next day. And the protagonist thought that it really was time to teach the insects a lesson, and his money wasn't so easy to take. After this whole situation was resolved, Yingxia said they were going out to eat that night, and he asked her why she wanted to eat out all of a sudden and she said it was to thank him for lending her the money. She also said that she had booked all the rooms in the Grand Hyatt Hotel in the UFO building, and in the building itself, she was complaining that her booking was made for half past five in the afternoon, and it was already half past five, and the place was still completely full. The guy only apologized to her, and she could only book the place when no one was there, but it was currently full, and if she wanted to wait, she should please go to the restroom. Otherwise, she was simply asked to leave, and he had no shortage of guests like her, and she said that it was more than clear that she had booked the table there, and now he was simply asking her to leave. She refused to leave, and asked what he could do with her, and if she was really looking for trouble, he would call security so he could get her out. Now she started to drop the ball, and again it was up to the protagonist to take control of the situation. But this time I support what he did, since she had actually made the reservations. Sankian asked if the insect had said that they were causing trouble out of the blue, and according to the young man, that was exactly it. And even if he had booked that place, if Hitler's mustache hadn't come to meet them, they would have had to wait there. So they were supposed to leave if they didn't want to accept what he, the Hitler mustache, had offered. And that got Sankian a bit excited, and he said he would let him see how unreasonable that kind of harassment really was. The unjust manure told his henchmen to get those two people out of there who were causing trouble, and the first one was intent on hurting the protagonist. 
but he dodged easily, and by the time he hit back, the guy easily lost his heart. As soon as one of the dungmen was kneeling on the ground, Yingixa began to stare at him in awe, wondering if he was really the Sankian she knew. He referred to everyone there and said that this was just beginning, and then the manure told the two who were left to attack the boy at the same time. But with just a swing of his arm, he finished them both off. Now the insect started to get scared, and asked the protagonist not to come any closer, because if he dared to cause trouble, he wouldn't do well in the great Hyatt court. The young man immediately told the manure to call his boss, and suddenly, someone gave an order for everyone to leave, leaving the insect surprised, and that redhead was precisely his boss. Manure told his boss that that explosive kid had caused trouble and hurt the security guards, and when he realized that Sankian had defeated the three of them with his bare hands, he took an interest in the protagonist. He even said that since he could handle those three security guards, he was just perfect, and if he's interested in following him, he'd give him 30,000 yuan a month. But Sankian asked who the insect thought he really was. Clearly, this made him completely indignant at the protagonist's comment. He said that he was a very talented and caring person, but now he didn't care about the protagonist anymore. So he was supposed to kneel down right away and apologize to him, and then he could just pretend that none of this had happened. But Sankian said that it was his people who had told him that his wife was causing problems. So basically, he just showed them what the problems were, and the right thing to do was for them to get down on their knees, so that the protagonist could think about whether he was really going to forgive them. Again, Yingxia was in awe of her husband, and she was enjoying the feeling of seeing an overbearing CEO. But on the redhead's side, he didn't like what the boy had said at all, so she asked Sankian to just let them go. But he told her not to be afraid, because no one would hurt her while she was with him, and that made the guy from before completely disgusted with this attitude. Attitude. Not to mention that he was completely ignored too. After that, he ordered the guy from before to finish off the protagonist, and he wanted to see how much he could really fight, and we see that this guy was indeed quite big. We also discovered that this dung follower used to be the fighting champion among the special forces, so it was for Sankian to prepare to meet heaven. The guy even admired the protagonist's courage, but Sankian just told him to fight if he wanted to, and asked if he hadn't been polished yet, by which he meant that he would finish off the extra. After that, he quickly went after Sankian, and when his blow was about to hit him, the red-haired man thought that he had even dared to provoke the big man, and it seemed that the protagonist really didn't want to go on living. But the protagonist quickly dodged the guy's blow, and using his legs to propel himself forward, he landed a single knee to the guy's chin, causing him to black out completely. When he was completely down, the redhead was amazed that the protagonist had finished off that giant with just one blow too, and the protagonist prepared to teach the redhead a lesson now. He even said that the insect could call more people if he wanted to, and he would certainly finish them all off, and since he was so arrogant, he would certainly pay for it, according to the insect. The person he was going to call now was not someone he could really face, and he should prepare to get down on his knees and beg for mercy. Meanwhile, Yingxia was simply in awe of her husband, saying that he really was very powerful. And after a while, we see Yang arriving on the scene, along with his henchmen too. He wondered what had happened to make the chief law officer so desperate to go after him, and whether it was really that urgent. Arriving at the venue, he was greeted by the redhead, who said that the child had definitely messed up his place, beaten up his security guards and bodyguards, and arrogantly made him shout. That's why he had invited Yang there and he knew that he hated those kinds of powerful people. And as soon as Yang saw the protagonist with his wife, the young man was simply speechless. With that, all the henchmen went towards the protagonist, and the red-haired man thought that now there would definitely be a great show there. But they all bowed to the protagonist, leaving the manure from before completely unresponsive. The protagonist asked Yang if that insect had called him out of the blue, and it was exactly that. And with that, Sankian asked if Yang knew what he should do then. He called those insects a bunch of idiots, and told his brothers to put some sense into that manure, so they began to teach the scum a lesson. After the beating the redhead had received, he asked why they were beating him, and after a while, the beating was finally stopped. Sankian then asked him if he was satisfied with such reasonable problems, and he said yes, he was satisfied, and asked the guy from before if there was any room left for him and his wife to have dinner. After seeing everyone take a beating, and the size of the protagonist's influence, the guy definitely quickly arranged arranged a place for the two of them to have dinner, and so Sankian left with his wife. As the redhead wondered who the boy was, he asked Yang what that was exactly, and he told the redhead that he would tell him just one thing. He was definitely looking at death, and he began to wonder who it was that he had provoked, for the number one of the Yuncheng gang to fear him so much.
If you like this series and want to continue following it, don't forget to leave your like so you can support my work. It's always an honor and a privilege for me to have you with me so far. I wish you and your family all the best, and see you next time.